This webinar will cover gene and genome aspects of BioPsych, including the gene page, operon page, genome browser, retrieving sequence information, and performing sequence searches. Let's begin by searching for the E. coli gene THRA. We could perform a quick search to find it, but it can take time to sort through all the quick search results. So we'll use the gene search button. We just want 1A there which will go directly to the gene page if it finds a single gene with that name. The gene page is organized into three sections. The fixed upper area, the lower area that can switch between different information sections or panes, and the operations menu in the right sidebar. The upper area is fixed in place and provides the gene name, synonyms, accession numbers, reactions, pathway, and evidence codes associated with this gene. The lower area initially contains several diagrams and a mini-review summary authored by our curators. We created this regulation summary diagram to automatically graphically summarize all known regulatory influences on the current gene, including regulation of transcription by PPGPP, of translation by isoleucine and threonine, and post-translational regulation by threonine affecting the complex that THRA forms. Clicking the green question mark will give you more expensive, extensive documentation on this diagram. And we can mouse over the close to close it. Database links are also present in the summary pane on the right here, as are these two diagrams toward the bottom, the gene reaction schematic and gene regulation schematic which will both be explained in more detail in subsequent webinars. To make it easier to find additional information available for a given gene, we have organized information into these additional panes accessible through these tabs. The gene ontology term pane is fairly self-explanatory. Note you can mouse over and click on the evidence codes for more information about what evidence supports the assignment of a given go term to this gene. The essentiality pane summarizes gene essentiality information available for this gene, noting whether knockouts for THRA grow under a variety of media and con conditions. So a THRA knockout does grow aerob aerobically under LB enriched medium, whereas for MOPS medium, with 0.4% glucose, we have two conflicting growth observations reported in the literature, so the overall growth assessment is indeterminate. The reactions pane lists the reactions catalyzed by the gene product. In this case, two reactions, the first in this first table and the second in the second table here. Because an enzyme with multiple active sites may respond to different activators and inhibitors at each site, we list the activators and inhibitors separately for each reaction. Similarly, we list available kinetic parameters on a per-reaction basis for this reaction versus this reaction. The protein features pane colors the protein sequence at residues of interest that have been annotated. This protein has many sequence features and it contains a nucleotide phosphate binding region at residues 471 to 478, which is this line, this information came from Uniprot, and it's shown right up here as this gold colored section, the same color is used to highlight those residues here. The operons pane shows the operon containing this gene plus one additional gene on either side of the operon. Furthermore, for clarity when there is more than one promoter, we draw a separate diagram for each transcription unit corresponding to each promoter. A transcription unit is a group of genes controlled by one promoter, and note that by definition, operons must contain more than one gene, whereas some transcription units contain a single gene. 
the references pane shows all references for this gene and the show all pane combines all the information from all the panes together to facilitate searching via your web browser. Let us now examine transcription unit pages. If we click on a promoter in this page, we will go to a transcription unit page for the THRL transcription unit, which regulates genes involved in threonine biosynthesis. The flask at the upper right is the evidence for the existence of this transcription unit. We see its transcription start site, and we see the sigma factor that regulates this promoter. We also see an attenuator that is sensitive to two different charged tRNAs. The citations here apply to the overall transcription unit. Proceeding down the page, there's a different section in the page for each of the sites in the transcription unit. And each site can have its own citations, um, often will indicate the sequence around that site. Um, it's telling us uh, what molecule the attenuator is sensitive to and the different regions of the attenuator. We're now going to visit a different transcription unit, uh, ARGCBH, and it goes right to that result because there's only one result matching that name. Here we'll show you what is shown when transcription factors are present. Here, each transcription factor binding site is numbered in case there's more than one site for the same protein, which is the case here. And these sites are colored red to indicate that they repress transcription. Note, by the way, that many entities in this page have tooltips and are clickable, such as the genes and the transcription factors, promoters, etc. And again, as we proceed down, we see there's a different section for each of the sites describing these two different transcription factor binding sites and uh, what they're sensitive to and whether they repress or activate transcription. Now we'll return to the THRA gene page. to show you how to retrieve protein and nucleotide sequences. Commands for those operations are found on the right sidebar operations menu. And in general, the commands in this right sidebar menu change depending on what type of page you're looking at. For example, they will differ for gene pages versus metabolite pages. And we can hide the menu when we don't really need it when it's obscuring the view and then bring it back. To obtain the amino acid sequence of the THRA gene product, we simply click Protein Sequence. And the sequence is shown here. To save the sequence to a file, we click Save Protein Sequence to File. And it has saved the file and then opened that file in uh, text edit on my Mac. To obtain the nucleotide sequence of the gene, or in fact of any genome region, we'll click Nucleotide Sequence and we see the sequence of the gene in the background window, but there's another dialog window that's popped up. This dialog window allows us to select any sequence on this replicon. The initial settings in the window will retrieve the sequence of the coding region for this gene, but we can tweak those settings to retrieve a completely different region by changing these numbers, or to retrieve additional flanking sequence, such as if we change the upstream and the downstream numbers as, as so, we can retrieve 100 bases upstream and 200 bases downstream. We can show that resulting sequence. Um, notice that the ATG is shown here up, uh, downstream of this additional flanking sequence. And the stop codon is also highlighted in red down here. BioPsych supports two types of sequence searches under the search menu, blast searches here and sequence pattern searches. The blast search tool is pretty standard, so we're not going to spend time on that. But let's look at the pattern search tool, which makes use of a software program called PatMatch. 
Pat Match allows you to search for short patterns only, less than 20 characters, and the pattern language is described in this table at the bottom of the page. So the pattern language allows us to search for exact amino acids or nucleotides, or it uses a, a language that lets us represent patterns that refer to sets of nucleotides or amino acids. So for example, N refers to any base, N or X. Now if we extract that as our search pattern, we're essentially searching for um, the sequence that ends in ATCG preceded by um, four, any four nucleotides preceded by ATGCT. Um, and then we can search against um, either both strands or only one strand. And we can also determine whether we search against the entire set of DNA coding sequences for all genes, against the whole genome, against just the intragenic regions, or against the intergenic regions plus additional flanking sequences on each side. Then there are additional search options right here to limit the number of searches, etc. Let's run our search. And we'll see that we get 48 results. And each result is described in this table. And we can click through on the genes by clicking here. Let's now return to the gene page and show you that you can enter the genome browser centered on this gene by clicking this button, View in Genome Browser. The gene we came from, THRA, is at the center of the display and is marked with these hash marks. Genes are colored here according to operon membership, so adjacent genes in the same color are in the same operon. The display shows promoters and their sigma factors if we zoom in a bit. So there's semantic zooming in the genome browser. Your zoom level determines what features are shown. So uh, we have a number of promoters and their sigma factors shown here. Pseudogenes are shown with X's through them. RNA coding genes have a different shaped arrowhead. This is an RNA coding gene here with the arrowhead not in the middle but toward the top of the gene. It's a, and it's a very short gene. The chromosome region that is currently displayed is shown in red. It's we're right near the origin of replication. And we can move that region left or right using these scroll buttons. The single buttons move a little and the larger buttons move a lot. The vertical buttons zoom in and out. We can also position the displayed region by clicking on these tick marks, such as right here. In addition, we can change the, the displayed region by changing the base pair coordinates and clicking go, or by entering a gene name, such as FOB, and clicking go. And you'll see once again that FOB is centered here. Um, these navigation tools can also be used to change the magnification level so we can go into the level of uh, individual binding sites. Uh, so here we see um, a transcription factor binding site in front of FOB. We see a promoter. And if we zoom in to the sequence level, we get this display around FOB. We can also zoom all the way out to what's called the genome overview by clicking here. And here we see the entire E. coli genome. Well, it almost fits in this region, where each one of these little shark teeth is one gene, up pointing our protein coding, down pointing like that one our RNA coding. Again, colors represent operon mem membership, and the, um, the bars represent transcript extents from our transcription unit information. And the gene we just came from is highlighted right here. And if we mouse over any gene, we'll see what that gene is and what its nearby genes are.